Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. I made this image to encompass the feel and atmosphere of a late autumn day. With a few simple techniques and just one light, it's possible to create a real sense of season and narrative. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is the set which I've built. And at the front of this, I have this bottle uh, with a few bits and pieces in it. This is going to form the main subject. And then all this lot at the back here, all the other bottles, that's going to form the background to the image, hopefully. OK, and you should be able to see that I've got quite a lot of distance between the subject here and uh, the background. It's about uh, 40 centimetres, foot and a half, something like that. OK, so with all this set, next thing to do, set the camera position. I'm using this tripod uh, with a geared head on the top of it, which will give me quite a lot of control over exactly where I'm pointing the camera. So I'm just going to place that at the front here somewhere, about there. And for the camera, I'm using this medium format camera. Now this has an 80 millimeter lens on the front of it. And if you're using a full frame, the rough equivalent of that in terms of angle of view uh, is about a 50 millimeter. So you don't need anything special to do this, uh, this image. OK, so I'll just pop that on the top there. Right, so the next thing to do would be to uh, tether the camera into Capture One software so it's easy to follow along and see the results as I get them. So there we are, camera's all tethered. Uh, so now I can show you the settings that I have on the camera at the moment on the software here. So it's in full manual mode. I have a shutter speed set of 125th of a second. Now that's the flash sync speed for the focal plane shutter in this camera. ISO 100. And also at the moment I have an aperture set of f8. That's about halfway through the range. OK, so with those settings, what I'll do is just uh, put the uh, viewfinder up here and we'll set up the shot. So I'll just have a look down here, I'll just get a rough focus about there. Now the other thing is, I think I need to just uh, increase the height of the camera a bit. So I'm just going to wind this up on the geared center column here to about there somewhere let's have a look at that yes that looks about right for the time being okay so with all that set up next thing to do would be just to take a test image uh, just to see what contamination if any we get from the house lights so with these settings i'll just trigger the camera okay and you can see from that that apart from the odd highlight in the glass bottles, there's very little going on. However, what I want to do with this image is have a very narrow depth of field. I want the depth of field to be just around this main subject here, so it throws all the background out of focus. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need to use a uh, relatively wide aperture. So I'm going to start by opening the lens up to its maximum aperture, which on this lens is 2.8. There we go. Now with these new settings, I'll grab another image and we'll see what contamination we get this time. Okay, so there you can actually see quite a lot of an image here. So at these settings, I'm getting quite a lot of contamination. But do bear in mind that this is uh, in this studio and I've got some bright lights to do the video. So I'm just going to use a little trick on this particular camera just to get rid of all the contamination. And what I'm going to do is switch over from using the focal plane shutter to a leaf shutter which is built into the lens. That will allow me to synchronise with the flash at virtually any speed I like. OK, so we'll go from focal plane shutter to leaf shutter. Then I can increase the shutter speed from 1 125th to, what shall I use, 1600th. 
and that should cut out all of the bright studio lights that I've got in here. So let's just give that a go. There we are. It's even got rid of the highlights in the bottles there. So obviously the vast majority of cameras don't have a leaf shutter. Uh, so you're just going to have to dim the lights when you actually come to take the pictures. But this makes it a lot easier to demonstrate what's going on. Uh, so the next thing that I need to do now is set a light. OK, so what I want to do is light predominantly this bottle. But I also want to light the background a bit. And I want to do it in such a way that I end up with uh, a crisp but soft light. So what I'm going to do is place a light about here somewhere. So you can easily do this with a speed light or a flash gun or something similar. You don't need a great deal of energy. OK, so at this sort of distance, this will act like a softbox, which is this big. So from the subject's point of view, it's actually quite a soft light source. You'll see what I mean when I grab an image. OK, so with all that set, what I'll do is just use the TTL meter in the camera just to get me into the right ballpark in terms of energy in the system here. So what I'm going to do is just start up the flash trigger here and I'll just put that in TTL mode. There we go. And with that, we'll just grab an image. There you go, and you should have noticed that that actually fired twice. The first time was to set the exposure and the second time was to capture the image. So this is what we've got. And OK, for a TTL exposure, it's not bad. It's a bit burnt out. Tends to get it a little wrong with high contrast images such as this, where there's a lot of uh, dark background. So what I'm going to do is just put that back into manual again. So to do that, I'll bring up the flash control, put it back into manual. And I'm going to start by taking at least one stop off that light, I think. There we go. We'll grab that again. OK, so that's a little bit better. It's still a bit bright, so there's just the issue of the exposure. So I'll just take half a stop off that and we'll grab another image. Yes, that's much better. So this is what we've got now. And that's what we had before. Just makes that little bit of difference. And I've got a nice out-of-focus background. So just to show you what that would look like if I'd stuck with f8, what I'm going to do is just change the aperture back to f8, now that I know what the exposure is. And the difference between 2.8 and f8 is three stops. So I'll just add three stops of energy to the flash, and we'll grab another image just as a comparison. So now you can see the difference that's what I've got at 2.8, and that's what I've got at f8. So this makes this stand out from the background quite a lot more. But I'd still like to separate out this a bit more. And the way that I'm going to do that is to separate it out using the light. Now, as I have at the moment, I've got this uh, reflector on here, which is the equivalent of having your speed light with the zoom at its widest setting. So what I'm going to do is swap this out for one with barn doors on it. And the barn doors will allow me to shape the light. So I should be able to shade off part of the back. There we are. So what I can do is just open these up like that. And just to help me get this in the right sort of place, what I'm going to do is just turn on the modeling light so I can adjust this barn door and see what difference it's making on the subject here. OK, so now I'm just going to move this down until it shades off the background a bit, like that. There we are. So with that done, I can dispense with the modelling light and just grab a test. Now, if you're doing this with a speed light, you just have to set a piece of card or something similar uh, and just do that with trial and error. OK. Well, that's a little too effective. 
I think I need to uh, just open that up ever so slightly. So I'll just do that. Like so small changes make quite a large difference. We'll grab it again. OK, so that's the sort of thing. So that's with no barn door. And that's with the present position, which I think is about right. So in the original image, there appeared to be some distortion introduced by rain on a pane of glass. So to mimic that, what I've got here is an old glass shelf. And I'm going to set this up just at the front here, just like that. So it's very close to the subject. But I actually want the whole glass to lean forward slightly, like, like this. Now the reason I need to do that is if this is straight up and down, I'll get a reflection of the camera in the glass. Whereas if I angle it slightly, then the reflection will not be of the camera. So I shouldn't get a reflection of the camera in the glass. That's the theory anyway. So there we go. So this is now all in place. And I've just used this C-stand with a couple of clamps on the top to just support the glass at that angle. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to take a test image just to make sure that everything's in more or less the right place. Yep, that's looking about right. So I've got a bit of contamination on the glass at the top here from the light, but I don't think that's going to matter because I'm going to spray the surface of this glass anyway with water to form all the raindrops. Uh, so that little bit will probably merge into everything else. So here I have a small spray bottle uh, and it's just got normal water in it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is relatively carefully uh, just spray the glass just around the area like that. But I'm leaving a hole in the middle, if you like, which is clear. Right. And the advantage of using water is that it will evaporate so I'll end up with different views over time. So just grab that. There we are, that's starting to happen. So this is what I had before. This is without any water on the glass. And this is what I've got now. So I think I need a few more drops around here. So what I'll do is just add a little more. and grab that again. Yes, that's starting to give me the effect I want. So I've got all these streaks running down and it's giving me that rainy look. OK, but one of the uh, disadvantages or one thing to just bear in mind if you're using an old piece of glass like this is that it will give a color cast to the image. So what I'm going to do is just use this uh, color checker uh, just to correct for that. So I'm just going to place this in the scene. And with that in place, I'll just grab an image. And that will allow me to accurately set the white balance. So I'll just pick somewhere in the gray area here. There we are. So that's corrected everything. Good. So I can remove the color checker and just grab that again. There, that's looking particularly nice, I think. So this is what we had before. And this is what we've got with the accurate color. OK, so for actually capturing the image, that's it. So there's a little bit of post-production to do. Uh, so I'm going to go into Photoshop now and just do that. OK, so this is the image that I captured earlier. And I've just imported that file into Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is just make a duplicate of that. So I'm just going to go onto the layer here, right click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call this Rainy Bottles. OK, so Photoshop has made me a new file at the top here. So this is the camera original 
which I can now shut down and this is what I'll be editing. That way I've got redundancy, I can always go back to the original if I want to. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just make an adjustment to this. So I'm just going to use an adjustment layer and I'm just going to pick the vibrance adjustment. So these are the controls that I've got for that. If I change the vibrance here, you should be able to see what effect it does. So if I bring the vibrance up high, it tends to oversaturate the image. And if I take it down low, it tends to wash the image out. If you just double click the icon here, it will take it back to the center. And the same with saturation, really. This will saturate the colors and this will wash the colors out. So what you can actually do with this is use them in tandem. So if I just increase the saturation here and then take that effect back off by decreasing the vibrance, I end up with a sort of dreamy image. Well, I think it is anyway. So just to check what it looks like before, I can just click on this icon down here. So you might be able to see the difference. I can see the difference on this monitor uh, and I think that's a bit of an improvement. Okay, so it just remains to select a crop. I'm using this for video so I'm going to use a specific ratio of 16 by 9 and I'm just going to bring the edges in a little and just move the whole thing up just to hide the edge of the glass. There we are, something like that. Just click on OK and there we have it. So by just employing a couple of very simple lighting techniques and by using an old glass shelf and some water spray, you can actually create quite a lot of ambience and atmosphere. And I think overall, that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.